Hi, my name is John from Japanese Knife Imports, and today I'm here to talk to you about stone surfaces while sharpening. Now, this is something I get asked a lot about when people come in here for sharpening lessons or when they're asking about different stones and how to use them appropriately. And so I figured that I'd make a video uh, and explain a little bit about the differences uh, in stone surfaces and how they can affect your sharpening. What do I mean by stone surface? Uh, so what I'm talking about with stone surface is the top of the stone that you're going to be flattening on. And when I'm talking about the conditioning of the stone surface, I mean, do you use it directly after flattening uh, when there's deep gouges in it? Do you clean up the surface using a nagara or a small diamond plate? Uh, do you rub two different stones together to make the surface more smooth? Uh, and how, how do you approach that kind of thing? And so it will vary between synthetic and natural stones in the way things work. Uh, as natural stones don't really have any binder or abrasive that are separate, it's all a, a mishmash together and they're kind of one and the same. But synthetic stones have a binding agent and abrasive, and so the way that the stone surface works will be a little bit different. And so first I'm going to start with synthetic stones, and I'm going to move on to the natural stones uh, later in this video. So with synthetic stones, uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that when you flatten your stone, uh, using, for example, a diamond flattening plate, but really any kind of coarse flattening device, uh, the flattening device leaves deep scratches in the surface of the stone. And a lot of people are scared by this, and they wonder, well, what's this going to do? How is it going to affect my sharpening? And so here's the answer. Uh, the deeper scratches on your stone will create better tactile feedback, help your stone cut more quickly, and help it rinse away swarf a little bit more easily. And swarf is the mixture of metal uh, that's being abraded away and the stone. Um, the downside is that it also reduces the level of polish that you get from your stone. So it's, it's a little bit of a trade-off. So when you're thinking about how you want to condition your stone surface, you have to figure out what's important to you. And also, you can use your stone a variety of ways. So you may start out with it with deep scratches and then refine it and try and push up your level of refinement out of there. Uh, the reason that the stone surface works this way is that the deep scratches create valleys uh, in, on the stone surface. And at the tops of those valleys, you see little ridges where the top of your stone is. And when you're sharpening, those areas are a little bit weaker, and so they break off a little bit more easily, um, it creating a more aggressive, I guess, grinding surface uh, as you get more abrasive in there. And the abrasive, fresh abrasive is released more easily. Uh, you also get a little bit more surface area uh, out of the stone that way, and so again, more abrasive is released more easily. And the more abrasive that you have in your mix, the quicker your stone is gonna cut. And also the texture of the stone uh, when it has the scratches and it will help you get that extra kind of tactile feedback where you get a little bit more tactile sensation as you're sharpening that tells you what's going on in your sharpening. Um, for coarse stones, it's very helpful. Uh, and for medium grit stones, it's very helpful to leave a coarse surface. Sometimes for finishing stones, it can also be helpful and it really depends on what you're looking for out of your finishing stone. Uh, if you're looking for the best kind of polish and highest level of refinement that you can get, it may be a good idea to clean up your stone surface with a finer grit stone uh, or a nagara or a diamond plate that's a higher grit thing that reduces the size and number of those, those deep valleys, those deep gouges. Uh, and that way then you're not releasing abrasive as quickly and it gives things a chance to kind of break down and it also makes the, the binding agent more a part of your sharpening. And so what you can get is a little bit better refinement out of your stone that way. Um, my personal preference is to leave the stones with the deeper gouges from the flattening uh, as I can move up in refinement as necessary. But again, for kitchen knives, being super, super refined is not necessarily the best thing for you. You still want to retain that kind of bite. And so you can do that a little bit more easily by leaving those deeper gouges. And then again, I get the faster cutting speed and better tactile feedback out of my stones. With natural stones, it's a little bit different. With natural stones, the way that they work is that as you sharpen, you start off with a little bit harder pressure and then work to lighter pressure. And you're trying to create mud and then refine the mud. And so when you have those deeper valleys and gouges, uh, fresh abrasive is being released, but you don't necessarily want fresh abrasive. You want to release abrasive in the beginning and then lighten up your pressure and spend time working it down. So with natural stones, you never want to leave deep flattening scratches in there. And in fact, oftentimes you really want to try and flatten your stone as you sharpen by using the entire stone surface a little bit more evenly. So when you see high spots, you sharpen on them and so on. 
Uh, but if you do need to flatten your stone, I highly recommend that you take some time and clean up the stone surface with a nagara, ideally uh, for natural stones, um, either some kind of like botan or mejiro nagara, one of like the whiter nagaras, or a tomo nagara, uh, which is cut from another finishing stone that can be used to, to refine the surface of the stone. The cleaner the surface, the better your natural stone will work for you as it gives you a nice surface on which to, to refine that grit and help it break down. The, the main reason that this is important is because with synthetic abrasives, they're not friable. They don't break down, they don't get finer. But with natural abrasives, they do. And so that's one of the ways that you get the best out of your stone is by working down the abrasive and making it finer and finer as you go. And so it's a function of time and it's a function of pressure and it's a function of stone hardness. But more than anything, it's a function of your ability to condition the stone surface to be appropriate for natural stone use. So when you're thinking about what you're gonna do with the surface of your stone when you're sharpening, uh, you, now you have the information that you need to be able to make a more educated decision. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us at Japanese Knife Imports. Again, my name is John. Thank you so much for watching.